For this question, I am given a description of a box we want to make. So suppose that a box with a top is to be constructed at a cost of $5.40. I'm just going to write important things as we go. So I have my cost, $5.40, and my box. So suppose the cardboard for the sides of the box is cost two cents per square inch. So and the cardboard for the bottom costs four cents per square inch. And finally, cardboard for the top costs one cents per square inch. What is the maximum value, uh, I'm sorry, maximum volume of such a box? So go through it one more time. We're making this box. We want it to cost $5.40. There's a different price for each of the cardboard for the sides, top, and bottom. We want to use this information to maximize the volume of the box. It's basically the biggest box we can make for $5.40. So let's start by writing out an equation in terms of the dimensions of the cube for the cost. I'm going to call the kind of width here x, the length y, and the height z. So we can also write an equation for volume. That's pretty easy, right? It's just x times y times z. Cost is going to be a little bit more complicated. We want it to equal $5.40. I'm going to go ahead and put everything in terms of cents. So 540 cents. And then the top is the easiest. The area of the top is going to be x times y, right? x units here, y units. So it's going to be xy square inches. So the top is going to cost just xy inches. And now let's do the same for the sides. So I have four sides I'm working with, but they're of two different shapes. This one and the one parallel to it, whose dimensions are x, z. And I have two of those, one in the front and one in the back, and one on the right side and one on the left side. And those side ones are going to be y, z square inches. So this right here gives me the area of the size of the box in inches squared. So if I multiply that by 2, that's going to give me how much the sides cost. So 4 times xy plus y, I'm sorry, plus xz plus yz. And then I just need to do the bottom. Again, that is going to have an area of xy inches squared, so it's going to cost 4 xy inches. So together, all of this makes an equation for my cost. I'm just going to combine like terms. I have an xy here, 4xy here. That makes 5xy total. OK, so to optimize volume, I want to try to write it in terms of two variables and use this cost function to do so. That way, I'm going to constrain the volume. The easiest way to do that is probably going to be to solve the cost function for z. See, I have two z's here. I could factor this out, rewrite this term as 4z times the quantity xy. And then I just want to subtract 5xy from both sides, move it to the other side. And then I can divide everything by 4x plus y. So 540 minus 5xy divided by 4 quantity x plus y equals z. Now let's plug this into volume. So volume is just going to be xy times this quantity. I'm going to distribute that xy over the numerator. So 540 
xy minus 5x squared y squared. And then that is all divided by 4x plus y. So to optimize the volume, I want to find the x and y values where its gradient is equal to 0. So I just need to write that gradient out. It's going to be a little bit messy. Let me make myself some room. So first I want to take the partial derivative with respect to x. I'm going to use the quotient rule here. So the first thing the quotient rule tells me is that the denominator is going to be squared. So that's 16x plus y quantity squared. And then for the top, I need to have the denominator times the derivative of the numerator. So I want to differentiate the numerator with respect to x. I'm going to get 540y minus 10xy squared. And from all of this, I want to subtract the derivative of the denominator times the numerator. So that's just going to be 4 times my numerator. Okay, so this is my x component, and before I calculate the y component of the gradient, I'm just going to clean everything up a little bit, so I'm going to have some extra space. And I'm going to go and cancel the 4s here from the numerator. So I have a 4 in the, numerator, in the denominator. And then I'm going to go ahead and foil out this top expression. So I'm going to get... 540xy xy minus 10x squared y squared plus 540y squared minus 10xy cubed. And then I can cancel out these two 540xy's and I can add this negative 10x squared y squared and a positive 5x squared y squared to cut this whole second term and get a negative 5. So if I rewrite this numerator a little bit, I've got 540y squared minus 5x squared y squared minus 10xy cubed. All right, that looks good. So that is the gradient, the x component of the gradient. And now I want to do the same for the y component. And you do it in a very similar way. So I'm going to have the denominator squared. And then the numerator, I'm a little crunched here, but I have the denominator times the derivative of the numerator. So 4 times quantity x plus y times 540x minus 10x squared y. And I want to subtract the derivative of the denominator times the numerator. So that's going to be 4 times 540xy minus 5x squared y squared. And again, I'm going to cancel the 4s on top and leave a 4 in the denominator. The denominator. Combining words here. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to go ahead and expand everything out. So is going to give me 
540x squared. Goodness, okay. Let's move over here. I'm going to copy the x portion of this. So I have So that's what I got for x, and now I'm going to go ahead and expand out the gradient, the second term of the gradient. So I've got 540x squared plus 540xy. Minus 10x cubed y, minus 10x squared y squared. Minus 540xy plus 5x squared y squared. I'm sorry, plus 5x squared y squared. And now I want to combine terms here. Again, I have a 540xy that's going to cancel with itself. And I can combine these two x squared y squared terms to get negative 5x squared y squared. So if I rewrite this, I've got five forty x squared. Oh goodness. Minus five x squared y squared. minus 10x cubed y. And I want to set this gradient equal to 0. And the first thing I'm going to do is clear the denominator. I'm just going to multiply the whole vector, both sides of the equation, by 4 quantity x squared plus y squared. And I can do this because I know the denominator is not going to be equal to 0. In order to have a cube, x and y both have to be greater than 0. So I'm going to clear the denominator. So that should make things a little bit easier. And then I want to try to factor both sides and set them both equal to zero. So I'm going to pull them out so I have two separate equations. just separated them with a line. So I'm going to go ahead and work on the x component first, and I see that I can factor out a y squared from both sides of this equation. And again, I do have a root here, y equals 0, but since my cube needs to have a volume, y has to be greater than 0. So I'm going to divide both sides by y squared just to get rid of it. And then I can do the same with a negative 5. So that's going to give me negative 108 plus x squared plus 2xy equals 0. So I can't really solve this anymore. I still have that y term. Let's take a look at the y component and see if maybe I can use them together. So this time I'm going to factor out an x squared from each term. And again, since I have a cube and I need a volume, x is going to be greater than 0, I can divide through by x squared. 
And again, I'm going to divide through by a negative 5. So I have negative 108. plus x, excuse me, negative 108 plus y squared plus 2xy equals 0. And if I look at these two equations, I see that they have two of the same terms. So I'm going to subtract them from one another. And by doing that, the 108s cancel and the xy terms cancel. And I'm left with y squared minus x squared equals 0. It tells me y squared equals x squared, so the square root of y squared is just y equals x. And I don't really need to worry about the negative square roots because, again, all of my components are going to be greater than 0. So I don't know what x and y are, but I do know that they're the same value. So I know that y equals x, so I'm going to actually substitute x for y in the equation that we had for the volume. So now I have volume as a function of one variable, and I can find its derivative, set it equal to zero, and I'll find an actual value for x and y. So I have 540x squared minus 5x to the fourth divided by 8x. So I'm going to go ahead and, I'm sorry, this is an 8x, and divide both terms by 8x so I can get rid of that fraction. So that leaves me with 540 over 8x minus 5 eighths x to the third. Let's go ahead and find that derivative. So I've got 540 over 8 minus 15 over 8x squared. Set that equal to 0, and the first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 8 so I can clear those denominators. So I know that 540 minus 15x squared equals 0. Now I want to divide everything by a negative 15. You would probably do this in your calculator. Mine is currently MIA, so I'm going to have to do this by hand. And I've got x squared minus 36 equals 0. And by factoring that, I know its two roots are going to be positive and negative 6. But I'm just going to take the positive 6 because I need a volume, so x has to be greater than 0. So. That tells me that x equals 6, but also that y equals 6. Now I just need to solve for my height, z, and I will be all finished. So to do that, I want to use the original expression that we wrote for z. And I've got it over here. It's 540 minus 5xy divided by the quantity 4 times x plus y. So now I just want to plug in a 6 for x and y. That gives me 5 times 36 divided by 4 times 12. So again, a calculator would be good here. Let me see if I can pull this up in my notes. So my denominator is going to be 48. And 
5 times 36 is going to be 180. So I have 360 over 48. You can reduce that by 12 to get 30 over 4 which is like 15 halves or 7.5. So the dimensions of my box are going to be six by six by 7.5. And then to actually find the volume that I need, I just want to multiply all of those together. So I have 36 times 7.5, which is like 18 times 15. Again, a calculator would be good. Two hundred seventy cubic inches. So at this cost, with those prices, the maximum volume of the box I can produce is two hundred seventy inches cubed.